I don't know if you've seen this game. Have you seen it? I don't know what game you're talking about. Because we're just going to... So, oh, the reason why we picked this up is to do our best to keep the audio not too bad for the listeners. But basically, we start with one, and it's one bounce to you. Then you go two, two. and we're going all the way up till... Let's try and go to ten. All right? But it can't bounce more or less times. But I can reach out and grab it whenever I like? No. No, you've got to let it bounce. You can... It's got to so come... So it's got to fall into my lap. Yeah, right. Okay? So we'll try and go to 10. Where do you come up with these? This is an internet thing. You've gone too far. Off the screen. <laughs> All right. Oh, that just I've went. got my opposite hand here as well. <laughs> <laughs> okay. If we do this first go, mate, this is fucking legendary. There's no way the world we will. Okay. There we go. Oh, fuck. No. Let's, let's be optimistic. Let's um, really... <laughs> if we can get four, I'll be happy. Let's, let's get to five for today, all right. all right? To be continued. All right. I hope you edit out all the bad takes. It looks like we get it first go. Oh! Ooh. Okay. Fuck. A lot of pressure. Oh. Fuck me. Doing what the young kids do. Okay. The curvaceous table does not help. No, it does not. It makes it so this is like this is like ten, basically. We'll count that. That's counted. Well, that's that counted. was off the table. <laughs> this is like fucking um, um, goaltending <laughs> <laughs> where the cameras yeah. are. Yeah. We should have fucking pulled <laughs> one up here. Cylinder up. Okay, so that was three. That was three. You need four. Okay. Ooh! Just hang on. I need to go back to my. <laughs> my five before was perfect. Fuck. Fuck. Okay. No, that's the angle again. I need to go wide. (laughs) (laughs) One, two, there's three. Four's easy. Two, three, fuck you. (laughs) This fucking shit game. Welcome to the Bronx Sheer Basketball Show. I am your host, Nathan Cullinan. I got looked the long way around. And I am joined by my co-host, JL. Welcome back. Thanks, mate. Good to be here. We uh, took a coincidental week off during the draft week just because... We know fuck all We about knew it. everything about it. It's just we had broken legs. It reminded me last year. Remember we did that... Um, we did a, a pod with those draft experts from America and then... And they then, jumped off the call and it didn't say what yeah. they did. Technical difficulties, that was my fault. Shout out to, what were their names? Draft dummies. Yeah. We were the, the tech dummies that day. But let me just say, I don't want to criticise them. This is a bit of a weird take but or a bit of a weird angle to go down. But they were, I mean, they seemed like young guys. As in, I don't know how much younger they would have been than us. But they were very quick to sort of, obviously they have to have like takes that no one has if they're going to be experts. They were very quick to just sort of shut down like the pro- the highest prospects of that year, which was M- Lamelo, um, Wiseman, and Co. Wiseman, I mean, that's worked out. Lamelo, I don't think's really worked out, and I think Ant, they sort of had, they sort of felt very similar. They they predicted that they knew the favourites were going to get picked, of course. Um, but yeah, they they're sort of. Um, lower ranking or lower in the top 10 ranking of Lamello, um, sort of I don't feel like has worked out. Neither with Ant. Ant's only gone. I don't remember any of their takes. So <laughs> Above expectation. Yeah. Anyway, shout out to Draft Dummies, stuff like that. Um, JL, after the draft, mm-hmm. 
It's been a quiet week in the NBA. Nothing's really happened. Fuck no. Uh, tumbleweeds everywhere. Yeah, nothing to talk about. Let's go home. Nothing to talk about. Well, this has been the Bronx Cheer <laughs> Basketball. It's been my favourite episode ever. What am I talking about? This league is undefeated, JL. Undefeated is the word I will always use. It is the most dramatic. It's the best reality TV. It is. It is. There's nothing better. There are, I, I wonder what percent of people don't actually watch games. Mm. You know what's here? Like, oh, you don't watch games. You're a casual. Yeah. What percent just genuinely follow the storylines and watch playoffs? There and is, I reckon it'll be heaps because it is the juiciest league in the world. There is nothing better. Uh, and if you have no idea what uh, we're talking about, you would have to be living under a rock because Kevin Durant, one or two hours before the 6 p.m. Eastern time uh, free agency opening on January 1 or June 30, whatever it is, Requested a trade, went into Joe Sy's office and requested a trade from the Brooklyn Nets. Mm -hmm. Bunch of information here and there. Apparently, the Nets saw it coming. No surprise. Um, what was your first sort of, tell me, I love to do this part. Well, how did you find out? What was your first reaction? All these things. I woke up. It was early, early as the morning. Woke up. Had a message. Just It was just KD. I was like, what the fuck's going on there? I hate messages like that. I've so, got to be honest. I hate messages like that. Checked, requested a trade, and I thought, fuck. And I was like, am I still like, am I not reading this right? Read it a few times. Like, oh, that sort of confirms everything I knew. Mm. KD's a bitch. <laughs> <laughs> I woke up, was rushing, because I'm type of not, mod, not a morning person. I was probably late for something. Um, you know, sort of eyes to the phone quickly. And I saw, because uh, I don't, I've, I manage my notifications well, but I've got to, I've got to manage the NBA app notifications better because they happen to pop up on my lock screen. A lot of other things don't. Anyway, I just haven't got to it. The NBA app gave me a notification. K, Kevin Durant requests a trade. And I only just sort of scanned over it. Like, you know, just sort of looked once a month. No, no, that's that's some. I haven't read that right. That's something, you know. Anyway, then I went and looked into it, and unbelievable. I was I was stunned. You know, when you like sort of half asleep and that happens, that sort of wakes yeah. you up. You you're looking around all over Twitter or wherever you're looking, and you're like, oh my god. And you're seeing it's everyone, happening. all the yeah. Americans reacting to it. Unbelievable. After Kyrie Irving opted in, mm. sort of the opt in, who knew what was going on, but the opt in felt like the there game. was a few people that when they opted in, there were a few who were like, Oh, this makes me easy to trade. Yeah. And everyone was like, Oh, well, well he could have just walked anywhere though. Yeah. But you know, it's beneficial for the Nets, you know, like that might have been part of the agreement. Yeah. And everyone's like, Nah, he's staying. There was yeah. a few people that were saying that, and everyone sort of dismissed it. Two days later, KD requested trade, and you're like, Fuck. The, net, some, the nets are fucked. Some people are saying that this is the greatest trade asset ever. Do you agree? Yeah. Probably is, isn't it? In terms of actually wanting to be traded. Yeah, well, in t yeah, yeah, that's on the table. Yeah. Has there ever been an arguably top, you give the number, top 10 to 20 player, top 10, 20 player all time, um... Top three or four player in the NBA, you know, a generational talent. Has there ever been that type of guy That's on a four year on a trade. four year contract with no team option, no trade clause, uh, no player option, no nothing? Has there ever been this? And I it's not that I not. can recall. Probably not. No. I mean, because like going back into uh, you know the nineties, there wasn't. You know, you could negotiate these contracts easier and it wasn't like you had long-term deals and money wasn't as important, things like that. So, of recent history, no. This is yep. this is the biggest, op, you know, trade request of all time. And, of course, the reports followed with the trade request and apparently uh, his two destinations that he's listed is Miami and Phoenix. What a bitch. Conveniently, <laughs> the two number one seeds of last season. Um but here's the thing about why this might be the greatest trade asset of all time is because on one hand, on the more likely hand, this will, it'll be an even bigger story if it goes the contrary, but on the most likely hand, as much as you know, player empowerment is such a big thing and if, he, if they're about to trade him to someone, like the reports start coming out, they're about to trade him somewhere he doesn't want to go, 
him and his team, Rich Kleiman or whatever, they're going to like blast the media and leak out that he won't even play, yeah. you know, if he goes to that team. However, is Kevin Durant going to sit on a bench for four years? No. No. This is why... And this is the I, Nets have all the leverage in this situation. Yeah, they they truly do. Like if if there's one year left, then no, Kevin Durant could just be like, I'm gonna that's spend right. year conditioning. And then and then say for example, the Utah Jazz, let's just name them. Say they're like, okay, Donovan Mitchell and a bunch of this, and then Kevin Durant comes out and be like, if I if you pull that trigger and you send me there as the lone guy, I will not play for one year if you have one year on his contract. The Jazz is gonna back out. Yeah. Um, but four years, especially no. with the CBA running up at the end of next year, is it? Yeah, something like that. So, and the the, the CBAs are like the owners are already filthy at the fact that Kyrie's missed half a year last year. Ben Simmons sat out. Players requesting trades left, right, and center. You know, even like now we look at James Harden, being like, yeah, we don't blame you. But last year was a lot of criticism, being like you've just signed here. We just requested a trade here. Yeah. Now you're requesting a trade again. Like there shouldn't be this much pa- player empowerment. The owners should have some sort of, you know, you, you've signed here, you're playing here. Bad luck. And there needs to be a bit of, um, I don't know, the owners needs to be on the play to actually fulfil their duties as well. And this was already going down in terms of there's probably going to be a lockout because yeah. there needs to be an agreement. And how do you, how do you mean? Yeah. But now that you got you arguably top three player in the league requesting a trade of four years left. Like the CBA is going to be ripped up next year or whenever it finishes and rewritten. So this can't happen. There's a, a couple of mini peaks that like I'll probably talk about on the show, but I reckon we've hit a mini peak of player empowerment, like this sort of the James Harden, the Ben Simmons. Where they can do whatever they want. Yeah. And now this... And and the look that Kyrie Irving and Kevin Durant and their time at the Nets, this whole look is just no one likes it. No. Like not even players, I'm sure at home are like, you know, look at the Warriors winning that championship with you guys in the final. Such, such units. Such it's all about the whole organization. Yeah. You know, like one through to fifty. That's right. Um, I think there's a mini peak that's been hit with. And it's funny because James Harden, Ben Simmons are all tied up in it as yeah. well. Um, with this Brooklyn Nets sort of whatever it's been, concoction. Disaster. <laughs> <laughs> um, and I think we're not going to see... Obviously, circumstances... Obviously, circumstances are circumstances. Like, for example, the Ben Simmons and Joel Embiid thing in particular had been sort of boiling over for a couple of years. Um, but in terms of like maybe like the James Harden or now the Kevin Durant, more so like let's go to James Harden. He was just he was just over it, and he was, you know, also recycling through all these teammates. I don't think you can moving forward. I don't think there's going to be many players that can do what James Harden did um, now two years ago. I don't think any Rockets. Uh, he did get a bit of criticism from criticism from the Rockets to the Nets. But you know what? Everyone was like, you know, I don't blame you. You've given absolutely everything to the yeah, franchise. Yeah, yeah. They've hit a wall. You've got two of your best mates in Brooklyn. You've got an opportunity. You've earned that right to request a trade at this point. Yep. It was the second trade to Philly when it was like, oh, well, you know, that's a mm. bit of a tall ass requesting a second trade within a year. Now, in hindsight, we know why. We, you know, of course, and even at the time, there was plenty of reasons why with Kyrie not playing. And he's like, well, I'm... KD's injured. I'm busting my ass with no support here at the moment. Yep. No one can blame what Harden did. Yep. Whether it'll change the fact that you can't do that, who knows? Yeah. I just feel like the three or four years he had left on his contract, um, the Harden from Houston to Brooklyn, I just feel like that's, you know, again, we've seen this little mini peak and there's going to be a bit of a scarring yeah. move for at least a few years. It's going life. to revert heavily back to... Yeah. Owners being judged. Yeah, like don't you don't you think that we're gonna do that? We're not going through that shit. Anyway, so Kevin Durant wants to be traded. So many things to talk about. Man, the Brooklyn Nets, which I famously <laughs> had so much faith in, and all this is it the biggest disaster of all time? Is it the biggest failure of all time? I think it is. 
It's bigger than the Lakers ones. Yeah. It like, is. Like, the fact that I saw a good stand. People have said, you know, Kobe and Steve Nash played more games together than, than Durant and Kyrie. It but was like it was like 70 or 80 games. Yeah, but the best bit was Hakeem Olajuwon and Vince Carter played more games together for Toronto. Yeah. Then these two played together. Maybe it was actually not even at 70 or 80. No, it was, like, it was like 50-something, I think. 40. It was either 40 or 70 or 80. I'm getting all these numbers. But up. He, he played Kevin Durant. This is what it was. Kevin Durant played something like under 120 games for the Nets. That's, that's, that's me. I can't remember the exact number, but I'm, I reckon it was like closer to 80. They played Probably. 44 games together, Kyrie and KD. What a joke. Not James Harden and Gary. What a joke. Unbelievable. The three of them had, what, was it 13 games together? Yeah. Fuck. Not even a full fucking playoff run. Unbelievable. Truly, truly unbelievable. Did you see Ben Simmons' um, uh, story that day? No. And now he's deleted his Instagram. He's put up a story of him doing his famous... You know, the the nostrils face yeah. with the not- nostrils emojis. And he says something like, feeling on top of the world. Do you have any? Do, <laughs> do you have any sense of no. what's going on? And now on? he's leaving Instagram. And I'm sorry, but that's his attempt to be like, I'm above this. You know, it's like, mate, no one's even thinking about yeah. you right now. The, the only time people are bringing you well, up in this moment is a joke about how you're... You're going to be playing with Westbrook next year. Yeah. <laughs> and how he said it's going to be scary... It's gonna be yeah. it's gonna be scary when they all play together. Um, okay, biggest failure, blah blah. Let's let's stay on KD and let's just keep going with the full charge ahead, full speed ahead. He listed the Suns and the Heat. Mm-hmm. Just quickly, where is Kevin Durant starting the season? Twenty two, twenty three. Give me a team. My gut feeling. Mm hmm. The Brooklyn Nets. Mm. I don't think teams that he'll want to go to are too good to want to scrap their entire core to bring him in. Yep. Teams he won't want to go to are like, well, what's the point of bringing on a 34-year-old off an Achilles injury that's going to take up all our roster space that we're going to have to throw all our future away to then finish mid-table and then he leaves eventually and we're back to where we started. So it just... In a stalemate at the moment, so yeah. I feel like nothing's going to get done. Um, I that's so like that's such that's the highest possibility right now. It sounds crazy, but it feels like that's the highest possibility. Four years on his contract, that that whole sitting out for however many years or whatever I talked about, I feel like that's even possible in Brooklyn, and they'll just like be like, yeah, whatever, yeah. you know. Um. Well, the thing is about the Nets is because they don't have any draft picks, they need to play yeah. as well as they can just yeah. to get butts in seats. Yeah. So they're gonna, they will want to trade him if he doesn't want to play there. But that's a, you know, if, if you're say, um, who's a good, if you're Boston, and you can throw in some future first round picks and Jalen Brown and you know a few other players here and there, but it's centered around Brown. You've got good reason to say, no, I don't want to do this because we've already made a finals run. Do you yeah. want to gamble your future when you know fairly confidently this team's got two to three more finals runs in the next six years sort of thing? You know, they're going to be at the top of the East. If you're a young team on the rise, like hyper- hypothetically at New Orleans, do you throw away Brandon Ingram to try and pair him with Zion and be like, well, yeah. he's going to make it work, but they're going to have to lose all their future draft picks. So if it doesn't work out, they're restricted. Yep. Yeah. If you're Golden State, you've just won a championship. Do you want to bring him back and be like, well, mm. now we're hindered? If you're Miami, you know, do you... Miami's probably the only team where it actually makes sense for because they're close yeah. but not quite there. And they're sort of old. Yeah. There's, a little bit. Uh, Toronto gets thrown around, but you're going to have to lose um, like Scotty Barnes or OG or Pascal Siakam. So it's like, well, they're losing good talent anyway. They're not maxing... You know, they're not going that much higher to reach the ceiling. Yeah. Yeah. So I talked about mini peaks before. Here's the other mini peak that I wanted to bring up. So we've just in this who sort of started in this recent times the hundred picks for the for the all NBA player. Was it who was the sort of was it what, what do you mean? as in like who was the most who the was first like the one. first one who was like I remember the biggest trade at the time. So there was Paul was, George. Was 
Kevin Garnett when he went to Boston. That was mammoth. But that was a lot of young players, not a lot of draft picks. Yeah, no, nah, the more recent ones. It's like, I mean, it's post, what is it, post 2018? Yeah. Kawhi, Kawhi was a lot. Kawhi, no, no, Kawhi sort of walked. No, no, he didn't walk. He, he and Danny for Pirtle. Nah, that wasn't it. I swear this to you. Um, PG got a lot. Westbrook, P, PG was massive. Westbrook was a lot, which is why OKC okay, so fucking lucky as I feel him. like Chris Paul might have been a, a decent bit. Chris Paul was, but didn't they give them all back to yeah. OKC? Yeah, yeah. Then Harden was a lot. Harden. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But the PG uh, Drew, one, Drew Holiday. Drew Holiday. Well. Yeah. And then the other day, unfortunately for any team that's trying to get Kevin Durant, um, there was a huge inflation jump when the Timberwolves acquired Rudy Gobert from the Utah Jazz for Malik Beasley, Pat Bev, um, Walker Kessler, Jared Vanderbilt, and four first round picks. That, this is fucked. The f- one of the first round picks is a top five pick, uh, protected pick in 2029. 2029's in seven years. What are the other prote- protections on them? No, um, it doesn't say here any other protections mm. for 2023, 25, 27. There is some. They're not unprotected, I don't think. Um, yeah. That's ridiculous. So if you're getting, if you're getting. Four, well, it says unprotected, sorry. Unprotected 23, 25, 27, and top five protected 29. They are. If you're getting four picks and. One, two, three, four. I'm going to go three useful players. Forgive me for not. I don't really know Kessler. Um, He's one of the best shot blocking big men in, in college basketball last year. Kessler? Yeah. Oh, okay. Let, I'm, I'm going to say, because I count Pat Bev. You're getting four useful players and four first round picks <laughs> for for Rudy Gobert. What the fuck do you get for Kevin Durant? Yeah. And it's <laughs> what? Oh, that's the thing, it makes no sense. What do you get for Kevin Durant? The good thing about Gobert going to the Timberwolves, if you're a Timberwolves fan, and I I, I don't like this trade for the Timberwolves at all. But the good thing is that Gobert is a, he's proven that he will get you a top four seed in the NBA. Yeah. This West might be a bit more difficult, but they've got a good surrounding cast. They didn't give out many of their minutes that they play. They didn't give out many minutes, so they're still going to be as good as they were last year, plus Gobert pretty much. They're in a decent position to contend for top four in the West. And as a Minnesota fan, that's probably all that matters. Like, yeah, If they've gambled their future to win some playoff series, that's probably worth it in their history, honestly. But it's a lot to give away, give up for a guy that, yeah, is just going to get your top four seed. That's you know, right. like it doesn't fit with the fit with Towns isn't great, and I don't think they're going to try and get rid of him unless they really no. want to go with Go Bear and, and they Ant. just resigned him. They just signed him to a, a max. But some like someone would if they threw him out there, someone mm. would take him. Yeah, well they're not going. But to. I don't think that was their long term plan. I think the idea yeah. is they're going to try and play them both together. Yeah. yeah anyway, so they're committing to it. I mean, I mean, I don't, I don't know. It's just a weird one. Like I Rudy Gobert, especially with the fit with Towns, for all Towns that, is going to be on the perimeter guarding. So you anyone? So you're going to have who do they have? You're going to have um, Rudy Gobert, Towns, Ant, um, D'Lo, D'Lo, and I'm getting up the depth chart now. Get up their depth chart. Okay. So, D'Angelo Russell. Yep. Anthony Edwards. Mm-hmm. Kyle Anderson. Oh, yes, they signed. Kyle Anthony Towns. They signed. Rudy Gobert. Slow-mo. Then they've got Jordan McLaughlin. Bryn Forbes. <laughs> Toreen Prince. Oh, yeah. Signed him. Jaden McDaniels. Yep. Nas Reed. So, mm. like, they've that's a decent team. That is a pretty decent team. Very good defensively, other than... D'Lo, but he improved a lot last year defensively. He's like, he went from bottom five point guards, probably average. Carl Anthony Towns, we know, not great. Moving him to the power forward might help. The power forward's got a, it's a bit of a weird one. There's a lot of power forwards that are just there to stretch the floor, which is good so you can hide him away. But there's a lot of power forwards that are way more athletic and agile than any power forward's ever been. Yeah. So 
it's going to be very match up dependent. I think whether it's a success or not. That's right. Yeah, match up is going to be match ups going to be such a big thing with this team. Um, it just feels like the Timberwolves. In, on one hand, and you sort of mentioned it, they've been bad for so long. So it's just if, like, they, if they make like a conference finals run. Yeah, yeah, that is worth it. Yeah, Sacramento would fucking give anything to win a playoff series. Yeah, and that's honestly that's needs right. to be the mentality at this point. But. Any other sort of normal team other yeah, than these, these, like, two. <laughs> these teams that you've talked about, they're thinking, when, the, when you've got Ant and um, Cat, you're thinking about um, like how to build a championship team. This just feels like we're on the rise. We've got Cat, we, oh, we can't. We got, <laughs> we got Ant, we've got uh, Cat. Let's just... Get the first available, you know, and the Jazz and I, are blowing it up. I feel like no one would have offered more than, you know, two first round picks. Yeah. I feel like they added extras for, they could have waited another month. Yeah. Wait for the bargaining price to go down and offered less. Awesome move by but the But also, the we, jazz. We, we say this because in our heads, four first round picks is a lot. But if we are talking about this team that with Rudy Gobert should finish top four in the West... Probably at worst, maybe sixth, but they're already at that point anyway, so it should bolster them to top four. Until, except for the 2029 20, pick or whatever you said it was, these picks are going to be late first rounders. Mm, but they're still assets. That's they the are problem. assets, but they're once That's you the actually problem. get to the draft, a pick in the high 20s is almost a negative asset to you because you'd prefer an early second round pick because you don't have to pay them for four years. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. You can extend them earlier, you pay them less. It actually fits teams' salary caps better, which is why you see a lot of teams trading down. Uh, uh, yeah, down at that point. Yeah. So if they are hitting the goals that they probably they're projecting by you know, whatever modeling they're using, they're probably like these picks are worthless to yeah. us. Yeah. Yeah. So it all depends on how successful they can You're be. You're really being generous here. Yeah. But I think you know as a four first we, round picks and four players, the fans always overrate a first round pick because we we treat a first pick in the draft the same as a 30th pick in the draft when we hear first mm. round pick. We think we think of all-star players yeah, for a yeah. first rounder when in reality, first round picks maybe what, like four or five become an all-star? Yeah. It is a tendency that fans have. So like yeah. maybe it isn't going to be so bad. It, anyway, might, it might not bite them on the ass like we think it might. It's good for just getting some wins and some playoff wins. Um, but let's sort of pivot back to Kevin Durant and keep talking about him and his value. And I think we've we've hit this little... We've, we've hit this peak of this time of all these draft picks and stuff like that. And you mentioned, because uh, Joe Sy or... Shaw, is it is it Sean Marks? Yeah. Is that the GM? Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. I'm confidently wrong if I am wrong. Sean Marks? What's the Warriors? I always get confused. The Warriors. Mark Lake was the owner and the... Uh, Bob uh, Myers. Bob Myers. Sean Marks. Sean is Marks is a Kiwi. Did you know that? No, I didn't know that. Yeah. Oh, ah, good on him. I feel like that should be mentioned more often. Oh, right. I did not know that. Anyway, so Sean Marks, someone came out and said they won a historic, you know, haul. And yeah. rightfully so. It's the best trade asset ever. But I think we might be seeing, we, we're about to see either the peak or they're going to have to accept that it's peaked um, with the Kevin Durant stuff. Because barring like some three or four team trade that helps everyone that gets involved, like, as you said, the amount that you you would actually demand for KD... Guts your team. Would gut the team... It always reminds me, and I know this is probably not even an example equivalent, but Carmelo Anthony requesting a trade to New York from the Nuggets with one year left on his contract and they New York paid overs for him and whatnot. And he got to New York and they had no one. Yeah. And the Nuggets ended up over the next few years having like a lot of success. I know they brought in Iguodala and whatnot, but they got a lot of good players in this trade, a lot of young players, some first round picks that both teams all ended up equal. Yeah. And I guess that's the idea of a trade. But when you want a star player, you want this to take you to championship level. Right. And the idea is that the other team in three, four seasons should develop those players enough to be championship level as well. That's, you know, that's why they had to make the trade. But when you gut your entire team to bring mm. you in, and then you've got no cap space for anyone else, and the thing about um, you know about doing that, and we we'll bring up a few trades here that um, that 
like that still might happen and they have to rely on minimums. Yeah. But how many vet minimum guys will be left at that point? <laughs> will be left, but are also how what's the percentage you reckon of vet minimum guys that are actually helpful? Next to none. It's not a lot. You you have struck gold and normally the, the smartest GMs do it. You have struck gold when you pick up a great vet minimum. Um, that really actually yeah. helps in the playoffs we're talking about. In the regular season, vet minimums go around all around the court. So if I had to say who would Kevin Durant be on, it, it's also because after that news and sort of the spike of the news, nothing else has really happened. Yeah. That's why I think a lot of people, and I will now say as well, um, are inclined to say the Nets. It just feels like who the fuck is going to give up? And it has to, for it to be beneficial, it has to be a three-team trade. Yeah. I think all the hypothesis at the moment are just two-team trades. Yeah. But the only way it's going to work... And it's going to have to fit perfectly. Because cause it, it's still, the logic's still there. Mm. Like the main team will still have to sort of give up things. The it's, good thing about a three-team trade is it can be teams getting rid of expiring contracts. Yeah. And just a big salary dump. Yeah. Which means uh, if it's... If you want to go to Phoenix, for example, they're not going to give up Devin Booker or Chris Paul, but that's the only way you can make a salary work. Yeah. But if you threw in like OKC for picks and whatnot, just, wait, where's Kemba Walker now? Is he back at OKC? I think... Uh, no, where'd he go? I don't know. Is it the Lakers? No, no. it's not the Lakers. Where did he go? I, I sort of... I didn't even really pay attention to what happened to him. I thought I saw the No, he's still the Knicks, supposedly. No, he's still at the Knicks. Right. Say you throw in the Knicks then. And they can get rid of Kemba's expiring contract. Then the Knicks are happy. Everyone's happy. Yeah. Picks are involved. Yeah. Just, it's impossible to do with two teams. Um, I don't think Miami, uh, barring a three-team trade, but even so, I don't think they have enough. And, oh, sorry, one of the biggest factors, probably the biggest factor, is also what the Nets want. Mm. Are they looking to replenish their draft capital? Because, you know, they don't have any. Because they gave it all up for James Harden. Are they looking to replenish the draft capital and get players in? Or, and this is more likely, we all think, are they trying to now going to build around Ben Simmons and actually try and be a good I think, I mean, it depends, what, it depends what they can get and if they try and get rid of Kyrie as well. Because they've brought back a Patty Mills yeah. and they also signed Royce O'Neal before is what happens. Or just after Kevin Durant requested the the news broke. If if they can get immediate draft picks, like if they get five draft picks over the next seven years, that doesn't help them. Yeah, they need picks and picks now if they want it because that allows them not to. I mean, they're still going to outsource their tank essentially. Yeah, someone's going to have to tank for them for them to get good draft picks. So. They're going to have to try and win games. Yeah, they're getting mid mid level guys. It's going to be like the twenty. 19 Nets team with D'Lo and yep. Toreen Prince and whoever else was yeah, there. Yeah, yeah. Jared Dudley. Yep. And that's the only... You, you've got to just pine for eighth and yep. just hope you just make a playoff run. Yeah. Because, yeah, because if they're wanting to get... Yeah, it depends on... Which is why I don't think... Because they want... Sorry, they... Some mm. of the reports is that they want two All-Stars. And Kevin Durant is also... I don't know if you saw, I think, today... One of the reports is that Kevin Durant has no interest in going to a team without two All Stars. <laughs> so they've got, we've a team got, with four All Stars. They need a team <laughs> well, with four All Stars. Well, that's where the two team trades come in. This is the Warriors. If, of... <laughs> if you're if you're Brooklyn, for example, if you can get if you can like switch Kyrie for Russell Westbrook, yeah, I think you do that because we know we've seen it now before. Westbrook is great at getting his eighth seat. He'll win your games. He'll get his twenty four eight and eight. With him next to Ben. That's the thing. That's where it gets more difficult. But it'll sell tickets and they'll win a few games. They might have the most triple doubles to loss ratio of all time. <laughs> <laughs> but they'll like that team with those two guys, yeah, it probably wouldn't work and be clunky. But like they're still talented enough to get like a what? A play in game. Yeah. And that's probably the best that they can do in this situation. Like you've got to take that. They would need Bef- some, that's before the K D trade. They would need goddamn Every Chris, shooter Christian in the book. Wood, Chris Boucher, or Dirk Nowitzki, or Cat to just, you know, Paddy, Seth Curry, um, no or, 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 Royce, or Royce O'Neill, um, yeah, Russ, Ben, and they need their centre because Ben's not a good defensive centre. They need their centre to just be lights out. They need the best 
They need Dirk or they need Cat. Um, anyway, I don't know. They're in active talks. What is... So you think the straight up... What is, what's Kyrie Irving's value? I haven't mentioned him at all. What's his value right now? Is his value that low, which I'm? it's fine if you're going to say yes, is his value that low that he they would trade him straight up for Russ? Who would want him right now? I have no... I, you tell me. And, <laughs> I don't know. There are teams that would want him. But I think if you're actually seriously trying to win... Not many teams want him. If you're trying mm. to be... If you're Washington, fucking earth you'd take him. Yeah. You'll, you'll finish 7th or 8th. It'll look nice next to yeah, Beal. that's actually a good one. They'll sell tickets, and that's literally all they care about at this point. If you're contending, it's like, all right, what figures do we have around them and what locker room presence do we have to keep them in check? The Lakers, I think, are probably the only team that could do that, and I think that's because LeBron's already got a good relationship with him. And we, we know that he respects LeBron. But, like, if you're... All right, teams that made it, made it high last year. Golden State wouldn't want him. Even if, Obviously, fit doesn't work, but they wouldn't want his personality. Boston wouldn't want him. Miami wouldn't want him. <laughs> Dallas wouldn't want him. <laughs> no, there's not many. Can you believe that after all that in Cleveland, can you believe that Kyrie Irving is forcing his way to the Lakers now? Have you, that report. You know, like... Didn't want to play with did, LeBron. Uh, did he grow up? Is that what happened? Because it doesn't seem like he's grown up. No, it's the fact that... That's the only team he knows yeah, that but, will be all right. It's fucking unbelievable. He's unbelievable. I'm so glad that no one's really talked much about him. It's because he fucking doesn't deserve no. it. And how about the report that they want to play together somewhere else? Kyrie and KD. Of course if, they do. If, if you... See, Kyrie is nuts. But if... Kevin Durant still, after all this time, best mates, is like sort of still under his <laughs> under his spell. He, under <laughs> his spell, I think half the oh. issue is they Joe Sai hates them both. Yeah, and I think they hate Joe Sai, and they're like, we want out. It's not about the Nets that they don't like. It's the fact that Sai is very much a you buy into the team, and that's it. And he. It sounds be. like he was the only one this whole time that didn't like the fact that the Nets were handing the keys to these two. And now it's clearly bitten them on the ass. And he's like, well, fuck them. I don't want them here. Yeah. <laughs> well, fuck them. <laughs> yeah, that's it. Fuck them. Yeah. No, and I respect him so much for this. This yeah. is one of the most... I'll always have so much respect for him and the Nets moving forward. I look forward to them doing well. The, the games where they beat Kyrie and KD, that'd be very nice. Anyway, Kyrie Irving, I don't know. It, I, I've been saying it for a few weeks. It, regardless, I don't know how the, the Lakers, how do they do this? How can they be in any talks? They have no assets and they're somehow going to land Kyrie Irving next to LeBron and AD. For, for Russell Westbrook. And, Russell Westbrook. And you know what? Kyrie Irving is going to play more games than he's ever played in his he's life. He's going to be healthy, he's going to be good Lakers. and he won't be crazy. It's just always the way. It's like when Windhorse went on ESPN and said that uh, the Lakers actually could be one of the only teams that could put together a package to get both of them. And obviously he meant trading AD. either. Tra trading AD, not LeBron. But trading AD. But just hearing someone say those words out loud into the universe, the Lakers are the, one of the only teams that can actually get both of them. I'm like, how does this team... I don't think KD would ever play with LeBron, though. I think the... Ego bruising LeBron's given him, it beat mm. him in the finals, him finishing third to LeBron in MVP three times or whatever it is, him always being second in LeBron's shadow. And it was always like, oh, KD will be the best player after LeBron. And it never happened. Not once did KD ever leapfrog LeBron. I don't think he would go there thinking, like imagine if LeBron beat him in a finals MVP on a championship <laughs> team. Like, that would, that would, like, I don't think KD could do that. Talking about KD's ego and where he wouldn't go. I'm sure you might have seen the Warriors. <laughs> Mark Stein say that he's not surprised that his sources are uh, informing him that the Golden State Warriors have made a call or two. Then it was a report by someone else. It's very unlikely. Of course, it's unlikely. Everything's fucking... <laughs> Does K if KD went to the Warriors, if he, if he formally said, I'm happy to go to the Warriors, and the Warriors made the trade happen, is he the biggest bitch of all time? Yes. Like end of the show. <laughs> yes, he's. If he, I was blown away yesterday by that report. The craziest part is, they are actually maybe 
when you think about everything, they might be one of the best, if not the most loaded sides for a trade package. I know that um, you talked down on, down on them the other week saying, what are they even going to be? But they have so many young assets. Wiseman, Kaminga, Moody. Yeah, Wiseman, Kaminga, Moody. And that's not even saying Pool. Pool. <laughs> I think Pool would have to Wiggins, go just due to... Yeah, salary. Yeah. Wiggins, Pool, Moody, Kaminga, Wiseman. And they've still got all their picks, Take your pick, Brooklyn, and the picks. I, I low-key want to see it just because I love the drama. For the drama, I do, but for fuck, like... That would be fucking hilarious. That would be... Like, I'd probably... I, I don't know, my, I'd die. I would die of, like, laughter. I just, like, want to give up on the NBA. Do you know, like, how boring was it watching, you know, 20... 17, 18, mm. it was like you were invested in the regular season. Oh, playoffs come around, you're so excited. And you win You win through like you know, the first round of the East. I don't know if Philly did that year. I think Boston beat you that year. Yeah, um, know, yeah. You know, and like it was always like, oh, this is so good. Fuck, no one's going to beat this team. You know, like, it was always just no matter how excited you got, there was a big asterisk on the fact that the finals were decided a year ago. And uh, if this happened again... <laughs> If you're if you're a team contending right now and you've built for years trying to work this out, and then this happens again for a second time, like so, you let's give just up. I asked this to my um, I'll I'll just go straight out Jasper Golden State Warriors fan. If it happened, right? Are they back to that? Are they a lock for yes. the championship? Yes. And that's that's what I thought. Jasper, Golden State fan, he's like, no, nah. he's like, first of all, he's like, I don't really want it to happen. I think everyone, no, like, no one wants it to. That's happen. That's right. No one wants it to happen for like positive vibes. But I was trying to say to him, mate, do you not remember? Okay, so turn it down because Clay, you know, Draymond's not as yeah. good. I reckon Steph's probably just as good yep. for now. KD's maybe better. Um, so let's turn down the dial. But the two best players are actually just as good. Turn down the dial. Like it's better role players now as well. A couple of levels. They're not going to give up every single one of them. They'll be able to get the minimums. They're the Warriors. They've got a good GM. They would... It would that'd be the favourites, at least. I mean, Without a doubt. I mean, I go on about the Clippers. Maybe the Clippers. Maybe this team. Maybe that team. But for me, they would be the out-and-out favourites. And I reckon they'd at least get... Let's just say KD's got four years... You talked about how Clay will be would be done, you know, in, years time. in a few years. I reckon they'd all want to stay yeah. in some sort of capacity. Um, they'd be they'd win one championship in the next four years minimum. No one wants to see it. How fucking hilarious is that? That report. If that happened, <laughs> where would you rank KD in all time? Because like <laughs> I I wouldn't even include him. I'd be like he does not deserve to be. He's done nothing by himself. Just like Kyrie on the 75. <laughs> Did they not put him on because of the vaccination thing? No. What was it for? That was that? Because he just wasn't good enough. No, 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 no. They, uh, uh, no. The only rumor came out because they had a video and they accidentally uploaded a video of him making it. Or oh, like top Kyrie's top 75 package. I thought but that... the digital creators had like, they were like, we've got 140 players available with a highlights package ready for when they get announced. We just upload them. Oh, right, right, right. So they just... Oh, I thought he yeah. didn't make it. The, was... the way that every every team before the draft does their uh, highlights package and like welcome to Boston to the you know the eight players that they think might yeah. join the team. Anyway, um, where would I rank him? Imagine just ranking him or biggest bitch or something. <laughs> I don't know, just like in general, would be like he's already so hard to rank in general because we he's done nothing by himself. Yeah. <laughs> And then if he did this, and it, like, say he wins two championships and two more finals MVPs, oh. and he's got four champions, four finals MVPs, and it's like, well, has he earned them? <laughs> and you know what the crazy part is? One last thing on this. The crazy part is, I actually think he's fed up enough with everything, and he's sort of at, I, I, I think he, he might be at a point where even he doesn't care if that happens, and... Let's not forget what 2015 was when they made the call. Yes, they beat him. 2016? No, 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 when they made the call. Oh, sorry, 2016, you're right. 2016 when they made the call. Yeah. When they beat him. Like, that was pretty shameless. 
Shameless or yeah, shameful? Both. <laughs> Depending which way you're looking at it. <laughs> that was pretty shameless then. Like That winning, was the biggest bitch move in NBA history. Winning's winning, yeah. Winning's winning, right? And the Warriors are very winning's winning. If, I don't know. If they're all in a room together sometime in this offseason right now, dinner, Steph and KD maybe, you know. Like, I know Draymond speaks a lot of shit. Clay's a bit, you know, um, hard nose or whatever the word is. A bit. He'll be on his boat elsewhere. <laughs> but like Steph and Bob Myers, Steve Kerr having a dinner with KD, and they're just having a laugh, and they're saying, "Look, imagine if we got the band back together, because we can." And then KD's like, "Look, not that they'd be at dinner together." K- I don't know. KD is the biggest example of grass is greener on the other side. Yeah. It was, oh, it was too hard to win. Oh, look how good it be. Because when, when he signed with the Warriors, and like there was an interview a few years later, it was like, oh, like well, me and my trainer were just watching the finals. And like, how many lanes would we get for open dunks? And that was what spurred on the like, this is a possibility sort of thing. Yeah. Well, like, <laughs> imagine if it happened. And then he goes to. He's like, oh, well, I'm not getting any credit for. I've won two championships with this team and they have won two finals of MPs and they still don't think I'm better than the second best player. Yeah. He's actually better than him, but you know. Um, then he goes to Brooklyn, can't do it. He's like, oh, fuck, winning wasn't so bad, was it? <laughs> <You know? laughs> like, grass is always greener. Imagine if he stayed. Fucking hell. Um, okay, so Kevin Durant is not going to the Warriors is, is your tip. Now I'm sort of talking myself into it at the moment. Yeah, so. I'm talking myself into it. Just quickly, I mean, I do have some trades. So, if there is going to be a trade, we both sort of said Brooklyn. If there is going to be a trade, give me like three. Give me like three of your favourite trades or most likely trades. Most likely. All right, well, the names that got thrown out initially was Miami and Phoenix. Yeah. For it to work. Would you, what do you want first? Miami, Miami or Phoenix? I've got them both. Go Miami because I don't really believe in All it. Right. I don't know. This would be a three team trade. Am I reading that right? I hope so. No, it's not. No, I'm just going insane. Um, The Heat would get Kevin Durant and Joe Harris. The Nets would get Tyler Hero, Nikola Jovic, not Jovic, (laughs) uh, Duncan Robinson, Kyle Lowry, Max Struess, Yurt Seven. Three first round picks and two pick swaps. So essentially five are at first round picks. Yeah. Nah. I don't think <sighs> Why are the Nets doing that? Tyler Hero and Duncan Robinson were in and out of being actually playable in the playoffs for the Hero is underrated at the moment. He's I know twenty one and average twenty two, five and five. I know, but he's pretty much in, in the playoffs and we're just seeing in yeah, in the no. That's not worth it. If you play him full time point, you can easily get a team around him that's good enough defensively to hide. Yeah, him. yeah, yeah. But anyway, the rest of that stuff, oh, for me, Miami to just don't have it. That Lowry, is, which is handy because it's an expiring in he's a hundred. Yeah, but that's that's a good thing. Nah, you've got how many million coming off the books? I don't want. I don't know. I don't want Lowry and his, you know, cap dent as my. Um, as my right, so you've got of, what do you put Duncan Robinson and Kyle Lowry together in two years time you've now got thirty million dollars to throw at whoever you want yeah when I mean, you think of it that way plus five first round picks, I know what you're saying but in terms of the Brooklyn Nets and now they're not the Kyrie Irving Brooklyn Nets yeah. um, and Kevin Durant Brooklyn Nets how good are they going yeah no nah, no nah. all right Suns trade Suns get again Kevin Durant Joe Harris. The Nets get Mikel Bridges, Cam Johnson. So this is a three-team trade, sorry. Jay Crowder, John Collins, AJ Griffin, three first-round picks, and the Hawks get DeAndre Ayton. I can go through them again if you like. Do you know the Hawks here? Uh, was Capella gone? No. Nah. The Hawks have Capella and Okongu. No. I think, I mean, if the Hawks could get... Aiton, they are hundred percent getting rid of Capella and Okongu. Yeah, it's an upgrade. You'd, you'd take that if you can, especially now that they've got Dejounte Murray and they're like, we are all in on this team. Yeah, he is the upgrade that they need. 
and they're two players that they could easily ship out for a decent return for mid-level guys that are yeah going to get them over the edge. Yep. So I'll go through it again. Um, Durant and Harris, the Nets would get Mikael Bridges, Cam Johnson, Jay Crowder, John Collins, AJ Griffin, and three first-round picks. That would get them the a playing game. Yeah. <laughs> Hawks get. We're probably a top four seed in the East. Yeah, yeah. The Hawks, I think, are an underrated. I know they just traded a bunch of their picks for Dejounte Murray, but I think that the Hawks are a bit of an underrated team in all this. They are looking to buy at the moment. Um, here's what I've got. I didn't. I didn't put together any three team trades. Kevin Durant to the Hawks, and just simply John Collins, who is only just in all this because they just seem to not want him, and he maybe I don't know. John Collins, DeAndre Hunter. And on a Kongu and a million picks, um, three, four firsts and three seconds for Kevin Durant. And I think that John Collins, Kevin, uh, DeAndre Hunter and a Kongu, I think that they're three, or you can, Kapala or a Kongu, you choose. Yeah. I reckon that they're three, they're three of the best players you're going to get. Instead of getting five fucking whatever me- mediocre players or five average players, I reckon they're three of the best players you're actually going to get. And all of them are young. All of them are young with Ben Simmons. Yeah. They've got Paddy Mills. They've got Seth Curry. Give me another one. I only put this one in there given the fact that Toronto got thrown in the other day of somewhere that KD might be willing to go. A lot of people talking about Toronto. Toronto... In terms of financials to make work, would have to give up Pascal Siakam. So it'll be Siakam, Ananobi, and two first round picks for Kevin Durant. Now, I know there's a massive upgrade there from Durant to from Siakam to Durant. But that doesn't get the The Raptors. The Raptors from no. sixth to first. Kills the Raptors. That gets them from sixth to fourth, fifth or fourth or third, you know? What if you didn't have to give up Siakam? Because I, I've got one. Van Vliet? No, neither. Scotty Barnes, Gary Trent Jr. Well, Trent's o- on a lot, isn't he? Yeah. OG and Anobi. Um, and then you can go Achua, which is a decent player as well. That's four good players. And Scotty Barnes, you know, rookie of the year. And then I've got a million picks. A lot of people are talking about Toronto because they feel like the main team that can give up what we talked about, like a historic haul of not just picks, which again you talked about can be a bit actually um, inflated of value. Yes, but actually, like listen to those players I just said, like an Ananobi, Gary Trent Jr., Achua, and Scotty Barnes. <laughs> it's funny how I had said it before, Achua. Um, Bless you. <laughs> this is where the the mini peak that I talked about. I think that it's funny. This is going to go for a while. This is why everyone talks about him starting with the Nets next season. This is going to go for a while because I think... There's no pressure. There's no rush. Well, not only that, but I think that Josiah and um, Sean Marks are going to be like, no, 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 we need the biggest trade haul ever. And then they're going to stop getting the offers. More than even Daryl Morey was asking. I mean, that's... It's just the an example of the way Daryl Morey Daryl Morey handed it rather than the value of Ben Simmons, but I think they're gonna have to. Re- someone's gonna have to say to them if they don't realize themselves, you're not gonna get what you're looking for. You're unfortunately, this is the peak of trade assets that you can get in what one trade. What will work in their favor though is getting towards the deadline next year when teams are panicking. Mm, they might have to. Sean Marks is probably going to be the one that's going to have to initiate. It might have to be a three-team deal, yeah. as we keep saying, that just injects this unbelievable amount of assets. But in terms of one-team deals, it might get to the point where they're like, well, there's just literally nothing we can offer you. If we offer you all this, then we're not going to be able to do anything. I've got one more trade for you, because we did mention this team. The Warriors get... And this is a three-team. <laughs> the Warriors get... Kevin Durant and Seth Curry. The Nets get Jonathan Kaminga, James Wiseman, Moses Moody, Matisse Thybul, Tobias Harris, and four first round picks. I like this. And the 76ers get Andrew Wiggins and Joe Harris. Joe Harris would be nice. Wiggins would be all right. Wiggins would be good. Wiggins would be good. Kansas boys back together. That's right. 
I really hope we get rid of Tobias. Um, so you've sh- you've shed Tobias for Wiggins, Dival for Harris, essentially. It's it's not bad. And Seth Curry gets thrown in there as well. It's not bad. Tobias and Wiggins are actually not too dissimilar mm. at the moment. Tobias one, one can play defense. Sorry. Well, Tobias, are you talking Wiggins? Yeah. Tobias was actually go look at his uh, minutes on Pascal last uh, last pass. Tobias actually has proven that he can hang defensively. He can be passable defensively in the playoffs. Maybe Wiggins is a much better player. I don't know. I would probably take that deal. Where everyone's going to be quite high on Wiggins at the moment. Yeah. And it's, if you asked us in. In February, be like, oh, is that really an upgrade? Yep. Let so me, Wiggins probably is not as good as we think right now. Let me. You brought up my team. Let's me. Let me bring up your team. This is one of the like player trades, you know, like where players, you know, players are the main focus. Kevin Durant and Nick Claxton to the Celtics. Speedy. Marcus Smart, Jalen Brown, no, nope. <laughs> Robert Williams and Grant Williams and. Yeah, a no. couple picks. <laughs> <laughs> no, <laughs> don't, don't. He says, um, "Is that too much?" Not in the fact that it's too much in terms of value. You would still have Jason Tatum, Al Horford. Who? When's he expiring? One or two? Two years. Good for those two years. You would have Al Horford, Jason Tatum, Derek White, Malcolm Brogdon. And Kevin Durant, I just named five fucking players there, I think, maybe four. My issue with that trade, and that's this is what I said earlier in terms of good teams giving up too much, is that you've just lost all your depth. And I've you've got five players there, and then who else? you got Peyton Pritchard. For Kevin Durant? I know, but... And this is... Nick Claxton with Horford. you got Malcolm Brogdon. you got Derek this White. this is what I was saying you in terms of... You have one player per... Per position. guard, wing, center. And that's about it. And what I said it before <laughs> about if you traded Siakam for Durant, and it does Im- obviously it increases any team. Durant's the best player in any trade here. But not by, if you deplete your whole roster, not by a lot. And I think the reason the Warriors have been successful this year, and I think what Boston's going for is strength by numbers. Mm. And I think having Boston of, you know, Eight men deep is better than that return. But especially yeah. with the fact that he's 34 after torn Achilles, we played well this year, obviously. But this might only be sustainable for two more years, whereas this team is built for the next six. Give me your percentage of you saying yes to that and no to that, like. Like 60 40. Yeah, okay, I like that. So it's not like a guaranteed no. I would think about every option. Because as I just said, you trade Robert Williams, which is harsh. Yeah. But you get back Nick Claxton, you've got Al Horford. Marcus Smart has to go because it's just, that's the way it works, 17 million. Um, But you've got now Malcolm Brogdon and Derek White and Peyton Pritchard. You have to trade Grant Williams, I think. Jalen Brown is basically the Kevin Durant swap, yeah. as in like, you know. Play for player. If, that, if if you guys were going to do it without a three-team trade, it'd have to be that. Are you getting Nick Claxton? Do you reckon they'd give you Nick Claxton in that? I feel like they would. They'd have to. They'd have to. They'd would have they, to would. in terms of money. Um, let me do two more or a couple more. I'll probably end up getting through all of them. Sons. Uh, I just did the basic one. Mikhail Bridges, DeAndre Aiden. Did you know that if someone sends an offer sheet for DeAndre Aiden, did you know this? If they send an offer sheet for DeAndre Aiden because he's a restricted free agent, they can't side and trade him by the rules. Really? So they can stuff whatever that is up right now. So Someone just goes for it just to... Someone with like, I guess it'd have to be feasible for the NBA to tick it off. But okay, see, if they just wanted to fuck with everyone... Then, but they might get stuck with DeAndre. Aiden. <laughs> That's right. That's the only thing, because then the Suns won't. But anyway, how hilarious is that? Um, the Sixers. All I can say is that Daryl Morey is the most star hunting GM in the league. I would be shocked if he's not trying to get Kevin Durant right now. When I say trying to, I mean everyone is. Everyone's had the conversation. Yeah, we don't really have the draft capital to give at all. <laughs> Tobias Harris, Matisse Liable, Tyrese Maxey. No. 
the Nets get three players that are <laughs> they no they'd have to love Maxi. Is but that, you've got is that part. one player that's already peaked in the NBA on his way out. Mm. Not on his way out. He's got a few years left in um, Harris, but we know he's not. And that'd be strictly my view of that is they're just wanting to be top six in the playoffs. Matisse Thybul, top seven. The way his offense hasn't mm. progressed, there's like if you run a hundred simulations of the NBA, I reckon he's out of the out of the league in like. 30 of them yep. in the next few years. And because he, there are so many younger guys that can play defense just as well. Yeah, that's right. And here's a here's an underrated destination, Portland. I think geographically the nearest to Seattle. Yep. <laughs> not that that means anything. He's not even from there. Uh, they don't have much to give. <laughs> <laughs> but Nurkic, Anthony Simons, and Asir Little... I don't know if they could trade Anthony Simons right away because they just signed him to yeah. an extension. I don't think he's eligible. Oh, actually, you know what? They actually probably can't trade him to Brooklyn. Have you been of hearing... the Ben Simmons thing. The, yeah. This whole Ben Simmons thing. That's the BAM thing as well. Yeah. I just realised, oh, if they can't trade Simons... Tatum, BAM, Fox, anyone that's... Donovan Mitchell... The only way that the, he could end up in Portland... Simmons gets out. Or they three-team trade. Yeah. Portland gives stuff to... I feel like he, he could... Yeah, I feel like that could be... I think Ben is going to be shipped out so they can try and get a young, one of those players. Like, you reckon? If that's what stopped with him getting, like, I don't know, Darren Fox or something. like. Yeah, man. Like, if, if they really had their eyes on someone like that. Mm. It's like, if, if you could give Bam up for Kevin Durant, so I will give away Ben for three first-round picks. We don't know if he's going to play, play anyway. You take that. We are well and truly at the calm before the storm. I just really, really hope... The Kyrie Irving's news is going to break eventually. Let's yeah. let's just say he goes to the Lakers. That it, sounded, news, it sounded like that was a done deal, essentially. Yeah. But then nothing happened, so I'm not sure what's going to I happen. feel like the two sort of biggest things that we're all sort of waiting on right now is the Donovan Mitchell. Seems like they're absolutely blowing it up. Yes, there was a report they're going to try and build around him, but... Danny Ainge, did you see Windhorst? What do you say? Oh, did you not see him on first take? It's like one of the biggest memes around going right now. He for two minutes. So all the fill-in guys are on um, mm. first take at the moment, which is strange. It's you, time to have your stars on. That's right. You, weird time for them to let them have holidays. Anyway, Windhorst and a, a few people around the table, and they're trying to like keep it going. They're trying to do what they do on first take. And then he's playing this sort of like, like the what you know when when you're talking and then they don't know what you're talking about you're sort of leaving it for the final second but then he never says anything he's just talking about and he keeps doing this you'll see that you'll see the meme eventually the picture he's like Danny Ainge at Boston with the Kevin Garnett and Paul Pierce trade blah 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 blew it up and then got in all the picks blah blah blah. They brought in Royce O'Neal <laughs> in Brooklyn or something like. Now, why is that? Oh, is that what <laughs> that be? He's like, I keep seeing that. And, and he said, everywhere. "Now, why is that? What's he doing here? Whatever it's, it was, it's a very strange trade." And he's trying to basically allude to that Danny Ainge is up to something in Utah and up to something blowing it the fuck up. And then that I'm pretty sure that was before the Rudy Gobert trade. Um, Anyway, I reckon I reckon it's all correct. I think everyone can feel it in the in the waters that I think Mitchell will be gone as well. I don't think they're going to try and build around they're Mitchell. Up. They're blowing it up. And so I think the Mitchell trade is is what we're all waiting for. Whatever happens there, and the Kevin Durant trade. But I feel like the Durant stuff is just going to go all. It'll go all all summer. It's going to go, oh, well, we didn't really get to talk about anything else, unfortunately. You didn't get to bring up Malcolm Brogdon or who else did you get? Fucking no one. We got, no. oh, we, we got D'Anthony De- Melton. De- I know. Shouldn't have been the first thing you, you message me. If you are new to the show, then, um, and Javon Carter also. There was one famous day where I mixed up Javon Carter and D'Anthony De- Melton. I was trying to... Two famous players in the NBA. <laughs> I was trying to tell you about Javon Carter and I said to Anthony Melton I love both and so they forever be in Bronx basketball folklore 
And Javon Carter is going on to have a successful career. He signed, re-signed for two years at the Bucks. De'Anthony Melton went from the Suns to the the Grizzlies in that Javon Carter trade, I think. Um, and played incredibly well. Got himself a nice contract with the Grizzlies. The Sixers on draft night, and I really love it because we're trying to win now, not draft young players, traded... 23, draft pick 23, I think it was, for DeAnthony Melton. Yeah, boy. And I also always went on about Dave Yeager and how much I love him. Ended up being a Sixers assistant coach. I said I love DeAnthony Melton. He's on the Sixers now. There's this guy that I want to talk to you about, Stephen Curry. And, um, <laughs> Fuck off. <laughs> I, I don't know if you heard of him, but I, you should look into him. Scrub. <laughs> Finals MVP. The Sixers have De'Anthony Melton. Life is good. Who else did we get? We're doing well. This is my little Sixers moment. But He's been waiting. We're, we're building. We're building for next year. You're though. building another second round exit. Don't you worry about us. We love a second round exit. Um, until next time, we hopefully there's, you know. Some actual news to talk about. Yeah, the news sort of waits for us. Um, but, yeah, the Kevin Durant stuff is going to... It's amazing. It's amazing how you think there's going to be nothing like this the whole off season. Even when, like, normally the year before, there's like this is happening this off season. You know, this is the LeBron. We, we, we're season. aware of it, yeah. But this just happens right out of before, nowhere, right before free agency. Amazing. Anyway, uh, if you are new to the show, hit the subscribe button and the notifications bell, and five stars on Spotify and Apple Podcasts really help the show. JL, thanks for coming on. Pleasure. Uh, We will talk to you next week.